Okay, in this example, we're going to look at a capacitor um, connected to a resistor uh, that uh, was once charged to 2100 volts. And uh, we're looking for the time it's going to take this capacitor to discharge through this um, resistor until the voltage across the capacitor reaches uh, 20 volts. So it's going to start at 2100 volts of potential and decrease down to uh, 20 volts of potential. This is a free response uh, case where we are removing the input power supply from this circuit. So uh, initially the capacitor will have 2100 volts across it, we'll open this switch and then at that time the circuit will just be comprised of the capacitor and the resistor and we will assume that uh, there's a low side, we'll use the low side of the capacitor or what was the power supply as the zero voltage reference point. So we're looking for the voltage that's developed across this as a function of time. So how does this capa uh, how, excuse me, how does the voltage across this capacitor change once we open that switch? So to determine this, we're going to, uh, since we're looking for a voltage, I'm going to suggest that we start off with a current balance or use the node voltage method. And uh, I'm going to look at this node right here. Right, I'm going to call this the bottom, the, the other uh, zero voltage reference node. And we're going to then perform a current balance, or we'll apply Kirchhoff's current law to this top node right here. Kirchhoff's current law at that node is going to tell us that we're going to have two paths for current to potentially go uh, through the elements down to ground. We're going to have a um, current through, capa through the capacitor, and we're also going to have a current uh, flowing from this top node through the resistor down to ground. Kirchhoff's current law says that all of those currents have to sum to zero. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply uh, the current to voltage relationships for the capacitor and the resistor um, to come up with my differential equation that's going to describe this voltage as a function of time. All right, so my capacitive relationship, the current to voltage relationship for the capacitor is C times the rate of change or the derivative, the time derivative of the potential that's developed across that capacitive element. So um, let's call this node V and this one zero. So the potential that's developed across that is going to be V minus zero or the voltage at this node minus the voltage at the bottom node. For the resistor, we're just going to use Ohm's law relationship. So here that's going to be the voltage at the top node minus zero volts divided by the resistance of that element. All of that has to sum to zero. So the two currents have to sum to zero. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, write out my derivative here. C dV dt plus V over R has to sum to zero. And then I'm going to do some algebra on this. I'm going to multiply through by my resistance value and find that RC dV dt plus V has to sum to zero. Of course, you'll recognize that this is a first order differential equation. It's a homogeneous differential equation uh, because there's no term on the right hand side. There's no forcing function. Uh, which is consistent with the fact that we're actually removing the input into the system. So no energy is be a being added to the system. Therefore, we're going to be solving for the free response or the homogeneous case. Okay. All right. So to solve this first order differential equation, we have to come up with the characteristic equation. The characteristic equation, you'll recall, is we're going to use the lambda operator, where the lambda represents the derivative of something with respect to time. And um, if we raise that to an exponent, it's going to represent a, uh, uh, the order of which the derivative that we're taking. So uh, here we have a first order derivative with respect to time of the voltage. So that's going to get a lambda. Right. right here, voltage is the variable of interest, or the V is the variable of interest, and uh, we're not taking the derivative of that. So that's equivalent to raising our lambda operator to the zeroth order or zeroth power. So that means we're not taking the derivative. So that's going to get a value of 1 because lambda to the 0 is 1.
All right, solving for our differential value, or our, um, excuse me, our lambda value, which winds up being our eigenvalue, we find that lambda needs to be equal to negative 1 over RC. Okay. And we know from uh, our studies of differential equations that uh, we need to, um, we can find a solution to this differential equation um, by using this lambda, and we know that um, the solution to this differential equation, uh, based on this eigenvalue, is going to be some unknown constant, a, times e to the lambda times time. Okay, which in our case is going to be some unknown constant times e to the negative t over rc. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is we need to figure out what this unknown constant is going to be. Okay, to determine what this unknown constant is, we have to apply our initial condition. All right, but first, that means we need to establish the initial condition. So the initial condition is what's happening, or what is the voltage at time equals zero? What is the voltage right before, or excuse me, right after the instant that that switch is opened, or we change the state of the system? Okay. So in this case, right before the switch was opened, this uh, voltage supply had charged the capacitor up to 2100 volts. At that point in time, right after we open the switch, um, we know that uh, the instant that we open the switch, this capacitor was charged to 2100 volts. A property of the capacitor is that the voltage across its terminals cannot change instantly. So if it was charged to 2100 volts before we open the switch, that means immediately after we open the switch, that capacitor can't change instantly, the voltage across it can't change instantly. So since the voltage can't change instantly, it has to be the same value as what it was immediately before the switch was open, which was 2100 volts. So we state that by saying the voltage across the capacitor at time zero is going to be equal to 2100. All right, so now back to solving for our um, unknown constant a here. The way that we can do that now is we know what the value of this function should be when time is equal to zero. We're going to set time equal to zero in here of our assumed solution. If I set time equal to zero, I'll have e raised to the zero. e raised to uh, the zero is one, so that leaves me just with the value of a. We also know from our initial condition that at time zero, um, the value has to be 2100 volts. So that tells us that A, our unknown constant, is now known to be 2100. All right, so our final solution is V, or the vo voltage across the capacitor as a function of time, is going to be 2100 times E to the negative T over RC. Right, and then if we wanted to uh, find the time for the capacitor to discharge, we'll need to plug in our values of R and C in that and rearrange the equation um, to solve for the, uh, the, the value of time that's going to give us an output of 20 volts. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and solve for time. All right, if I s rearrange the equation and solve for time, I wind up with T is equal to negative RC times the natural log of the voltage at some time that I'm interested in solving for um, divided by this 2100 volts or the uh, initial voltage. Okay, And I want to solve for uh, how long it takes to get to 20 volts after I open that switch. All right, so I plug in my value of R and C. My R value is um, 1,000 mega ohms, which would be 1,000 times 10 to the 6 ohms. My capacitance value is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 6 farads. And all of that's going to be multiplied by the natural log of 20 divided by 2100. And solving for T in this case is going to give me a value of 5,584 seconds, or yeah, 5,585, sorry, 
7,585 seconds, uh, which is about uh, one and a half hours. So um, with this capacitor resistor arrangement, because we have such a large resistor in here, it's going to take a long time. We're not going to let a lot of current leak through that resistor. So it's going to take a long uh, time for this capacitor to discharge down to 20 volts from 2100 volts.